Hello friends, welcome to the lecture on course design of simple scraper. The objective of this <coughs> content is to set out a simple scraper by the new method and the method here is offset from long code method. The equipment required to set out the curve is open cast up, rows, ringing rod and tape. This is the linear method and generally there are two methods. One is linear method and another is angular method. And the linear method is used when a high, 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 high degree of accuracy is not required and the curve is short. Whereas the angular method is used when we require high degree of accuracy and the length of curve is large as compared to short. So there are various <coughs> methods by which you can set out the curve and the, the name of the methods are by setting the curve by ordinate or offset from long curve. So this is one of the one method. Today we are going to discuss this particular method. Similarly, another method is offset from tangent by making use of perpendicular offset and by making use of parallel offset. So these are the two methods by which we can uh, set the curve using the linear method. So this is the figure <coughs> which is going to represent the different element of simple bit curve. In the figure, the line AB is going to represent the tangent and we are going to call that tangent AB as the linear tangent. Similarly, from point B towards C, the line BC is there, so that particular line BC can be called as rear tangent. So AB is the forward tangent and BC is rear and forward. So whenever, so AB is one of the direction, AB is one of the direction and suddenly you have to change, you have to change the direction of a rope. And therefore, whenever a vehicle which is moving in a straight direction, and when it has got a apex, uh, vertex point, when it is not possible to balance the vehicle, and it is very difficult for the driver to maintain the equilibrium condition at point B. Therefore, in order to avoid the accidents, in order to avoid the accident, and in order to provide the comfort for the passenger, and in order to maintain the design speed <coughs> for which the curve is located on a particular road, we are supposed to design the curve by providing the proper amount of superposition to it. So here T1 and T2, these are the two points lying on the tangents A, B and B, C. So T1 point can be called as starting point of the curve, whereas T2 point is called end point of the curve. And the <coughs> center and our curve is T1 E T2. The curve is T1 E T2. Whereas when I consider the distance between the points T1 and T2, that is the distance on the curve. And since the dis this particular distance is long, therefore I am going to call the T1 T2 as long. T1 T2 as long chord. Whenever, even though if you consider any points lying in between T1 and T2 and when you pick up any points on the curve then the distance or the length of chord is very less. Therefore T1 T2 can be called as long chord. And by making use of this particular long chord you can set the curve T1 T2 at sight. Here in the figure O represents the center of the arc, R is the radius and the change in the alignment that is represented by deflection angle and generally it is denoted by phi. Whereas the angle of intersection I, I it can be denoted by angle of intersection and the relationship you can get that is I plus phi equal to 180 degree. I plus phi equal to 180 degree because they are in one line. Therefore, 180 degree curve is completed. Similarly, in this particular diagram, <coughs> D is a midpoint. And this is the property of simple circular curve that the distance T1 D and D T2 they are equal. At the same time, 
the tangent length bt1 and tangent length bt2 they are also equal they are also equal. therefore whenever we want to set the curve whenever we want to set the curve we have to in this particular method we have to reach to first of all <coughs> we have to calculate the distance between p1 and p2 that is the length of long curve and by coming at center of t1 t2 we can calculate the coordinate b we can calculate the ordinate b and then it is possible to locate the left points lying on a curve t1 e by taking the distances say at 5 meter left of d and we can calculate what are the coordinate or offset which have to be measured from the long chord that is t1 t2 and once the tangent lengths are uh, offset lengths are calculated by making use of d and by fixing the points at certain interval in between the points d and t1 and by extending the offsets towards the curve by making use of open curve stuff we can set the right angle right angle uh, offset and by considering the length of that coordinate from the which is to be taken from t1 t2 is to is set along that particular direction and then at that particular uh, point peg is fixed or arrow is fixed similarly number of points in between t1 and e are fixed and the calculation so <coughs> it is not possible to do all these calculations at sight so therefore the office work is required and this office work is in the form of design of simple circular curve and finding the element of simple circular curve here in the previous diagram we have seen a b and b c are the known tangents to the curve b is a point of interest or we are going to call it as a vertex the angle phi is known as angle of deflection angle i is called angle of intersection the points t1 and t2 are known as tangent points and the distances bt1 and bt2 are known as tangent length when the curve deflects to the, towards the right it is called as right hand curve when it curve, when it deflects to the left it is said to be left hand curve ab is called the rear tangent and bc is called forward tangent as explained earlier the straight line t1 dt2 is known as long curve and the curve line t1 et2 is said to be length of curve and the midpoint of curve is e and t1 et2 is the is known as apex or summit summit of the curve the distance b is known as apex distance or we are going to call it as a external distance the distance d is called the worst sign of a curve or we are, we are <coughs> going to calculate what is the coordinate of that particular point and r is the radius of curve generally the radius curve is designated by two parameters namely radius and degree the objective of this <coughs> content is to set out a simple circular curve by linear method and the method here is offset from long chord method the equipment required to set out the curve is open cast stuff rows ringing rod and tape
coming to the second method. So this is setting out simple square curve by Rankine method. So when you consider the Rankine method, it is also called as angular method. Where we are going to make use of angular measurement. We are going to make use of angular measurement. Whereas we are not going to <coughs> make use of linear measurement, that we are not going to use the linear measurement, but sometimes in order to locate the position of points, they are also used. Therefore, by while studying this particular topic, that is setting out simple circular curve, the objectives are setting out a simple circular curve by Rankine method of tangential angle. So students should be able to set this particular curve at sight. And the instrument required for setting this particular curve is headlight tripod, second is ranging rods, third is arrows, fourth is tape. So these are the equipment which are required while setting the curve by Rankine method. Headlight with tripod, ranging rods, arrows, steps. So again, we are coming to the figure of simple circle. Curve. Again, the same elements of simple circle, simple circle curve are there. So B is going to represent the rear tangent. B is going to represent the forward tangent. B1 and T2 these are the tangent point of the tangent points. And O is the center point and R is the radius. And T1, T2 is the length of long curve. And BT1 equal to BT2, this is the property of simple circular curve, and it is the length of tangent for this particular simple circular curve. And by knowing the distances BT1 and BT2, we can come in a backward direction towards point E, uh, A and first points A to calculate the change of T1. The change of T1 is calculated equal to or, ch or change of T1 equal to change of B minus B T1 that is R tan phi by 2. You can calculate the change of T1. So to the change of T1 we can, we can add the length of curve T1 T2 so that we are going to reach the point T2 and change of T2 is calculated. So here in the diagram T1 P1, T1 P1 it is a T1 P1 is equal to T1 P1 is the point and corresponding to T1 P1 delta n is the deflection angle. So here during the construction, during the construction, when you consider or when we consider any point P1 which is corresponding to initial cell power. So whenever we consider the curve, the curve, so there are number of points which are lying on the curve. And from T1 the curve is start. And T1 to T2, when we consider curve, the first point lying on curve, let us say it is P1 it is P1. So P1, P1, P1 is the length and that particular length we are going to call it as the length of initial support. That is called length of initial support. Similarly, from P1, again we are going to consider next point P2 and the distance between P1 and P2 is equal to length of initial support. Maybe 20 meter or maybe 30 meter. Maybe 20 meter, maybe 30 meter. Likewise, depending upon the length of curve, we can have in the beginning, we have got initial support, at the end, we have got final support, and in between initial and final, we have got number of unit cords. So that way the curve is formed. That way the curve is formed. And here T1, P1 equal to L1 and P1, P2 equal to L2. So P1 is the first point I know for. It means it is a point corresponding to initial support. So T1, P1 equal to L1. So it is the length of first point. That is initial support. And delta 1 is the angle for first core. Delta 1 is the angle for the first core. And R is the radius and delta N is the total angle, deflection angle for the core. So here, angle T1O P1. 
T1 O P1 equal to 2 times angle B T1 P1 equal to 2 times delta 1. So in the chord T1 P1 equal to arc T1 P1, therefore when T1 P1 T1 O P1 T1 O P1 T1 O P1 we are going to refer T1 O P1 equal upon L1 equal to 360 divided by 2 R 2 pi R. So 2 times so T1 P1 O can be is equal to 2 times delta 1 and 2 times delta 1 equal to 360 into L1 upon 2 pi R. So here delta delta 1 value of delta 1 is calculated and uh, in order to calculate the value of degree in minutes that is multiplied by 60. So the formula is 360 into 60 into L1 upon 4 pi r and whatever the angle whatever the angle of deflection angle we can get it is in minutes and by doing this calculation we can get we can arrive to the formula that is the value of deflection angle is calculated as 1718.9 into L1 upon R where L1 is the length of initial record similarly L2 is the length of unit cord L3 is also length of unit cord likewise the last length is the final length of final cord is to be calculated similarly delta 1 equal to d1 into l1 upon 60 when d is given then we can make use of the, this particular formula that is d into l1 upon 60 when degree is known we can make use of formula d into l1 upon 60 where r is missing where here d is missing so delta is represented as 1718.9 into lm divided by r whereas when radius is missing and when the degree is known we can calculate the deflection angle delta 1 equal to d into 11 divided by 60. So when we add the deflection angles for each point delta 1 to delta 2 to delta 3 likewise up to point T2 you should get the value and it should be equal to 50 percent of deflection angle that is 5 by 2. So this way we can set the curve and while setting the curve the field procedure is like this. So during the field procedure we are going to use the instrument that is target theta right. We can use ranging rods, we can make use of chains or tapes for fixing the points P1, P2 like, likewise. Now the value of delta 1 we may get in say in degree sometimes <coughs> maybe in minutes and seconds so likewise we we can get the different deflection angle and generally the value of the first deflection angle delta 1 is calculated as 1718.9 into L1, Ln upon R where L is the length of initial sub -core. so we have to set the instrument at T1 we have to carry out the temporary adjustment at T1 and the point B is bisected point B is bisected by setting the oriental circle A to 0 degree and B to 180 degree so we are along the line of sight T1 B once the once we are along the line of sight that is T1 B then we are having the because we are going to make use of tape and by changing by loosening first of all once the line of sight <coughs> around T1 B is established we have to tight the lower plate clamp screw so that this direction will be fixed then we have to lose the upper plate clamp screw and angle equivalent to value of D1 angle equivalent to value of delta 1 is to be set on vernier A plus 180 degree on vernier B. 
So after setting the angles, where to where to stand? One person is going to stand along the that particular direction that is T1 T1, and by knowing the distance between T1 P1, the point along the line of sight is marked, and by lowering the telescope, by lowering the telescope, we can fix the point T1 on the ground. Then, so this is the first point we have set at sight. Similarly, similarly, again by loosening the upper plate came screw and angle equal to delta t and angle equal to delta 2 we can we can mark the point p2 mark the point p2 with e1 as center and length equal to 20 meter or 30 meter equal to unit length of unit core so from p2 we have to mark and along the line of sight when we set the angle equal to delta 2 along that line of sight and with center as e1 and length equal to 20 meter or 30 meter we are going to mark the point p2 in a similar fashion we have to extend this particular process till we reach to the point p2 So the procedure is explained again here. Set the cellular at point T1. Both plate varies to 0 degree and 180 degree. Direct the telescope towards the point of C. The line of sight is thus direction of rear tangent. Release the vernier plate and set the angle 1 on the vernier. The line of sight is thus direct along the T1A. With the 0 end of the tape, point T1 and T2. One they are marked. Thus, the point is fixed. Set the second depression angle on the vernier so that the line of sight is directed along T1 B. With the zero end of the tape and pinned at A and and the length equal to standard length, standard forward length. Swing the tape around A till arrow is bisected by the crosshair. That is fixing the point. Second point. Repeat the procedure till we reach to the point 